Hi, my name is Fawn Deswart. I'm a solution architect with Plum Grid since January 2013. I work with our customers to take our product into their production environments. Today we're going to look at virtual network functions. In this session, we're first going to take a look at the concept of virtual network functions, and then we're going to move on to a use case on the whiteboard. Before I start, I'm assuming that you've already watched the introductory video on the Plum Grid platform from Valentina. So what are virtual networking functions, and why do customers need them? Virtual networking functions are distributed software components that customers can use to create topologies. We provide bridge, router, DHCP, and security policies that can be used to represent your web, DB, and application tiers. Another important characteristic of virtual network functions is that they provide high availability, as well as in-service system upgrades, meaning upgrading the software and the functionality of these virtual network functions do not require an outage to your already running applications and your topologies. Another very important aspect of virtual network functions is the high availability. The Plumbrid platform provides at all times availability of the functions in a distributed way. If a function would experience a failure, the platform will restart it so it can resume normal operations without impacting applications that depend and rely on these functions for their network transport. In summary, Plumgrid virtual network functions provide advanced, multi-tenant and scalable networking solutions to customers in cloud infrastructure without having to purchase new network equipment nor have to reconfigure the existing network equipment. Now, let's move over to the whiteboard where I'll show you how the virtual network function works. So here we're going to look at an OpenStack deployment where we have the virtual infrastructure above this dotted line and then the physical infrastructure below the dotted line. We're also looking at two tenants, Virtual Domain 1 and Virtual Domain 2, implemented with physical infrastructure below the line. The, what we're going to demonstrate in this first one is looking at Virtual Domain 1. We have Virtual Machine 1, Virtual Machine 2, connected through a bridge with external connectivity. Now let's take a look below the line. As you'll notice, Virtual Machine 1 is located on physical host on the left, and Virtual Machine 2 is located on a different physical host. You'll also notice that the red virtual domain with its topology is completely rendered in this physical host, and also on the second physical host, completely rendered. This is important when we're going to illustrate the distributed virtual network function. Again, we have Virtual Machine 1 and 2 on the same bridge, where Virtual Machine 1 would like to communicate to Virtual Machine 2. How is that done in a virtual network function? Virtual Machine 1 will communicate to the bridge and say, I'm looking for Virtual Machine 2. The bridge would then do a lookup function to determine where Virtual Machine 2 is. It determines that it's over on this physical host over there. So the bridge would then build a VXLAN tunnel from itself through the physical network infrastructure over to this bridge over there, which will then forward the traffic to Virtual Machine 2. The return traffic will follow the same path if necessary, for instance, responding to a ping. This, dis this distributed network function will continue communications between the two bridges as these two VMs communicate. Again, this is point to point from Virtual Machine 1 to Virtual Machine 2 from one hypervisor to another without any hairpinning or any service node supporting this communication. So here in our second instance, we're going to take a look at the green Virtual Domain 2 over here. As you can notice that we have a more complex topology. We have Virtual Machine 1 on its Bridge 1 and Virtual Machine 2 and 3 on Bridge 2 connected via a route of virtual network function. This time again, Virtual Machine 1 would like to communicate to Virtual Machine 2. And to do that, Virtual Machine 1 needs to go through its bridge, to the router, to the bridge, and then to Virtual Machine 2. Now let's take a look how that's implemented in the physical infrastructure. Again, as you will notice, Virtual Machine 1 is on the left-hand hypervisor, and Virtual Machine 2 is on this right-hand hypervisor. 
As before, you will notice that the topology is fully rendered on each one of the hypervisors. And we see this with Virtual Machine 1 connected to its bridge, router, bridge with external connectivity. And the same goes for Virtual Machine 2 on its bridge, router, and external connectivity. To establish the connection, again, Virtual Machine 1 would connect to its bridge and traverse the topology, saying, I would like to connect to Virtual Machine 2. Virtual Machine 1's bridge would communicate to the router. The router would know that that network is located on this bridge. And then this bridge would do a lookup function and determine that the bridge instance it needs to connect to is located over where Virtual Machine 2 is running. So this time, the second bridge is now going to build a VXLAN tunnel through the physical network infrastructure all the way over to that second bridge and then send the traffic on to Virtual Machine 2. Return traffic would follow the same path back between these two bridges to establish a once again point-to-point -point distributed virtual network function connectivity. As you can see, we have two very different topologies rendered at the same time on two different hypervisors, providing connectivity to different virtual machines at the same time in a distributed way at scale to not influence any contention or any hairpinning in this architecture. Thank you for joining us today for this tech talk on the virtual network functions of PlumGrid. I hope you will look at the other sessions in this series of tech talks.